What's up, rock stars? I'm Coy Wire. This is CNN 10. Happy Monday. Whether you celebrated Passover, Easter, whatever you did, ate lots of candy. Hope you had an awesome weekend. You're feeling refreshed and you're ready to rock this new week. Let's kick things off by getting right into the news because we have a lot to get to, not a lot of time to do it. So let's get to it. We begin today with a solar storm that had colorful auroras dancing across the skies much farther south from where they are typically seen. The Space Weather Prediction Center, part of the U.S. National Weather Service had predicted a geothermal storm at an intensity level of G3 out of G5, but the storm reached G4 severe level conditions for a period of time. NASA defines a solar storm as a sudden explosion of particles, energy, magnetic fields, and material blasted into the solar system by the sun. That includes eruptions of gas and magnetic fields from the sun called coronal mass ejections, or CMEs, which were released from the sun last week and arrived at Earth earlier than expected. When CMEs, or solar flares, are directed towards Earth, it can create a major disturbance in our planet's magnetic field called a geomagnetic storm. Thanks to the Earth's magnetic field and atmosphere protecting us from the material from the sun, these storms don't cause direct harm to us, but the effects of geomagnetic storms for those of us here on Earth can range from power outages, disrupted communications and satellites, but we also get to see some stunning auroras. You might remember a severe geomagnetic storm level G4 also triggered auroras over much of the U.S. last October. Researchers are observing increasingly intense solar flares and coronal mass ejections erupting from the sun, which is currently becoming more active as it experiences its solar maximum, or the peak, in its 11-year cycle. Pop quiz, hot shot. What animal has the largest eyes known to scientists in the animal kingdom? Colossal squid, humpback whales, ostrich, or elephants? Answer is colossal squid. The mysterious deep sea cephalopods can be over 20 feet long and have eyes that can be up to 12 inches in diameter, about the size of a pizza or a basketball. The big-eyed invertebrate, the colossal squid, just got a little less mysterious. Scientists with the Schmidt Ocean Institute have recorded the first video footage of the colossal squid in action 100 years after the marine creature was first identified. Take a look at the team's recent deep-sea discoveries revealing creatures seen alive in their natural environment for the first time. I started hyperventilating, I teared up. We have never seen this animal in the wild before. We've known about the colossal squid for a century. But this is our first confirmed footage of the mysterious creature in its native habitat. We could think of this maybe as, as a teenager squid. It's not quite an adult. It hasn't fully matured yet. It's still got a lot of growing to do. The colossal squid will grow up to an estimated 23 feet long, weighing as much as half a ton, the largest squid species on Earth. And it's not the only underwater animal the team of explorers and scientists working with the Schmidt Ocean Institute found during its last two voyages to study the deeps near Antarctica. This is Galatuthis glacialis. Um, this is the first time it has been seen alive. And again, it reiterates that the, a lot of the deep sea animals are actually really fragile or really beautiful. Now to a look at the World Expo in Japan. It was the second to take place in Osaka. The organizers describe a World Expo as an event that brings people together and innovations from around the world in an effort to address issues facing humankind on a global scale. They've taken place around the world since the 1800s and have showcased the latest inventions of their time like the elevator, the telephone, and the electric cars. This World Expo plans to bring 100 countries and companies together with a futuristic utopian vision for a better way to live our everyday lives. Our Hanako Montgomery got a preview of the site. Japan, 1970. A post-war boom led to economic progress and prosperity. A towering symbol of that is the Osaka Expo held that same year. Over 64 million people came to see what the future will look like and experience a dizzying diversity of technology and culture all in one place. This is the site of the 1970 Osaka Expo, which was the first expo ever held in Japan and in Asia. Now, this Tower of the Sun is symbolic of the technological innovation and the economic progress that Japan was experiencing after the end of World War II. Today, Osaka is gearing up for another World Expo, and the world is a very different place. 
The global economy is in shock from trade tariffs imposed by U.S. President Donald Trump, leaving markets in Japan and elsewhere reeling. Yeah, I think uh, in this beginning of 21st century, the whole global situation is very unstable. So I believe this is really precious opportunity to show so many countries come together in one place. Here, unity is in the shape of a grand ring, the world's largest wooden structure, according to the Guinness World Records. This is the vision of renowned Japanese architect, So Fujimoto. I mean, it's just absolutely massive when you look at it like this, when you take it all in. How do you feel looking at your work? Well, it's, it's like, a, like a small world in a sense. You can recognize, yeah, we are connected, we are together. According to Japanese government predictions, Osaka is expected to welcome around 28 million visitors to the expo over the next six months. But there have been challenges to the build, and reports of low advance ticket sales have raised doubts about whether this expo can deliver a return on the government's billion-dollar investment or give Japan's economy the boost it badly needs. I believe many people in Osaka and then, of course, Japan, hopes this expo could be strong messages to all the world that, yeah, we are here. It's two weeks before opening day on April 13th, and over 150 countries and regions are putting the final touches to their pavilions. Once open, the expo promises to be a global mix of cultural events, cutting-edge technology, and googly-eyed mascot merch. And if all goes according to plan, it could be a massive revenue generator for the Kansai region. We spoke to analysts who said Kansai represents around 15% of Japan's economy, and hosting the expo could increase potential growth. When architect Shin Takamatsu worked at the Osaka Expo 1970 as a student, he realized something was missing amid the futuristic buildings. By interpreting and understanding the past, we can develop a perspective on the future. He designed this pavilion using Nishijin textiles, a locally made fabric traditionally used in kimonos, with a history going back over a thousand years. This momentary piece of architecture might serve as a bridge between the past thousand years and the future. Here, each pavilion has its own vision of the future, a tiny beating heart made of genetically engineered stem cells. Computers controlling sound and surface. In a world facing so much economic uncertainty and upheaval, a futuristic utopia-themed expo might feel a little out of step. But maybe that's the point. Of course, expo itself is happening every five years. But this is like a really changing moment of the global situation and also the structure of the society. This is kind of a special like a moment to see Expo. It's more like a once-in-a-lifetime event. Today's story getting a 10 out of 10 goes to a bridge that is not for anyone afraid of heights. The world's tallest bridge set to open this June in China's rugged and mountainous southwest region, the Huajiang Grand Canyon Bridge measures 2,051 feet above the river below it. That's about seven football fields stacked end to end. This bridge dominates the current record holder, the Milau Viaduct in France, by more than 900 feet. Record aside, once the bridge is open, China's state media says the travel time over the canyon will be reduced from two hours to just one minute. And that's about all the time we have left. That's plenty of time, though, for my favorite part of the show, shout out time. This one goes to Mrs. Irwin and all my Raiders at Ermine Crest Middle School in Cranberry Township, Pennsylvania. Rise up. I see you, Scarlett. Thank you for spending part of your day with us. And thanks to all of you who've been subscribing and commenting on our CNN 10 YouTube channel. We are at more than 999,250 subscribers. When we hit a million, I'm going to mark the occasion with something wild, maybe a dunk tank full of slime. Matter of fact, why don't you all send some suggestions of what we should do? Let me know and we'll see how this goes. Have an awesome day, everyone. I'm Coy Wire and we are CNN 10.